Hello. So next talk will be Can you Cafri USD? Uh, will be presented by the Steve Chamberlain. Uh, I will let him now to continue with the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, this is new KFBSD explained. Um, this will be a just short 20 minute talk um, talking about um, some of the history of KFBSD and um, the current status of it because it's been quite some time since we really did any sort of publicity uh, demonstrated um, what new KFBSD is now capable of in testing and SID. So, GNU KFBSD um, is a sub-project within Debian. Um, we only use packages from the official archive, um, except Linux, because um, the idea was to use um, an alternative kernel. Um, I, I, I still like to use Linux. Um, there's nothing really wrong with Linux, but... Um, This is not just simply a set of packages to be installed on a GNU Linux system, but um, you can't simply apt-get install a kernel and boot it. The entire system has been recompiled for the FreeBSD kernel. Um, as well as the kernel, um, we get all of the FreeBSD kernel's hardware driver support. Um, so the drivers themselves are different from in most cases different from the drivers shipped by Linux, which is quite useful um, in case you have trouble with hardware um, using Linux drivers. Um, this would be an alternative to test the hardware to check if it's a kernel bug or hardware issue. Or it may be that KFBSD simply works on hardware that you have available. So instead of throwing it in the trash, you, you could use KFBSD and still use hardware that otherwise would have been useless to you. Um, as well as the kernel, we take a few utilities from FreeBSD, um, mainly just to boot it. Uh, there are already some BSD utilities in the Debian archive. So the mailing list actually dates back to 1999, um, though work didn't begin that long ago. Um, the the first Debian BSD based system was um, something that Matthew Garrett claims to have bootstrapped. Um, but we never really, s the developers at the time, I, I wasn't involved that long ago, but the developers at the time um, couldn't easily exchange the work they were doing. Um, people, many developers then had dial up connections. Um, it wasn't convenient to exchange whole machine images um, of, of b compiled binaries as well as patched source code. Um, so, you know, in, in modern times, GitHub and um, the cloud giving free storage is, is really something we take for granted now. It was a, a real limitation to online collaboration. Um, in 2002, um, it was suggested that it may be easy, easier to port Debian packages to a different kernel if the same libc was used, GNU libc. The GNU herd project was already active at the time and had the same idea. Um, Nathan Hawkins managed to bootstrap such a system based on FreeBSD and GNU libc, but that was hosted on an FTP server at a university which had a fire and before anyone else was able to get another copy of his work, it was lost permanently. So um, it was bootstrapped again by someone else, Robert Millen. Um, he took it further and managed to make the Shroot. It was a Shroot running on top of regular FreeBSD. It, it wasn't something bootable by itself, uh, but it contained enough of the compilers, toolchain, and Debian core packages to actually build new packages. So from there you could build many, many more. Um, things like building the kernel and being able to boot came like much later. Um, it was accepted into Instable in 2009. Uh, prior to that, there was an unreleased archive of 
custom built packages that had been like manually bootstrapped. Um, so not something really releasable. It's, it, they, they wouldn't have under, undergone the same QA or had security support as the rest of the Debian archive would. Um, by 2011, it was ready for release with Squeeze. Um, it was called a technology preview um, because it was still somewhat buggy and incomplete. Um, it had about 85% of Debian source packages building for it. Uh, by 2013, that increased to 89%. Um, ZFS support was added in the installer, um, also within Grub2. That was, that was work done by Robert Millen. I actually noticed this show up more recently on the PlayStation 4 dev kit. There was a, a screenshot leaked of the PS4 dev kit, and that was booting FreeBS, like a FreeBSD-derived system. Not GNU KFreeBSD, but um, FreeBSD itself. Um, Sony were, were using that, that code that Robert Millen had written for, for this project. Um, BST gels were working. Um, even, even now, we still don't have a full set of utilities to administer that easily. But what can be done with that is um, you can create multiple shoots, basically, but um, it includes facilities more like containers. You, know, you can assign multiple IP addresses to a server and then assign some of those IP addresses to your containers, which each run in a BSD jail. So you could run a SSH service <laughs> within the jail. Um, and then log into those SSH services. So for example, on my development system, which runs Wheezy GNU Cafe BSD, there are shoots for SID, which I'll show you, has, has its own um, IP address, <laughs> its own IP address on the local network. So I have shoots for each of like SID, Jesse, Wheezy, and I can just SSH into them. Um, the PF firewall was already ready. Um, PF firewall um, has a configuration syntax which is quite desirable. Um, it's similar to a utility, I forget the name of, that um, is used as a wrapper around IP tables. The DSA uses a tool to administer IP tables. Um, PF firewall configuration syntax is actually quite similar to that. And it's very extensible. Um, with Wheezy, we already had Apache, MySQL, PHP, scripting languages. So to someone who's familiar with um, a Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP development environment, if you were to put them on a Wheezy GNU KFABSD server, they probably wouldn't notice any difference because um, the, the only tools that they really use are already available. You could also um, deploy a Wheezy shoot on top of FreeBSD itself, containing um, Debian packages and the GNU libc. And you could run those on top of FreeBSD. So we were actually bringing software to FreeBSD that might not have existed in their, their own FreeBSD ports archive. And you could do the reverse. You could uh, install a FreeBSD shoot on top of Debian GNU KFABSD. Um, if, for example, you had proprietary software compiled for FreeBSD, you would be able to use this to run it on a actually Debian-based system without virtualization. Um, ZFS, um, I mentioned, was already working in Wheezy. Um, also, there was support to create ZFS file systems within the installer. Um, if you have a ZFS file server, um, there's a lot of discussion recently about the ideal way to back up data with Debian-based servers. Um, what I do, and have been doing for some time, is with my ZFS file system, file server, sorry, I um, periodically rsync 
um, my data to that server um, and use ZFS snapshots, which allow to permanently keep a consistent set of files from, from that particular point in time, uh, which you could restore later. Um, he, here's an example of um, the ZFS utils script in Debian, etc default ZFS utils. You can configure snapshots to happen automatically and then arbitrarily delete snapshots between snapshots. Um, if you do this on the assumption that the most recent data is most important to you, you're, you're most likely to want to restore recent data, but you still like, with less granularity, some backups from longer ago. This is a, a really good way of doing that, which you can't easily do in, um, with, with incrementals, like tip style incrementals, because you can't arbitrarily delete incrementals. You, you, you would need like a full set of incrementals to be able to restore to a particular point in time. Um, but this was working really well in ZFS already in Wizzy. Um, on production servers, um, I've deployed this, and one server didn't crash, didn't have to be rebooted for a serious security vulnerability in the kernel, didn't, didn't go down for uh, 400 days con consistently, continuously, sorry. Um, performance wasn't great. Um, the first bar here, <laughs> the, these, these benchmarks should be taken with a grain of salt. They're not necessarily benchmarking the OS itself, but um, the way that packages or third-party software gets built and then how it then performs in situ. Um, it has improved between Wheezy and Jesse, and it's almost on a par with Linux for certain tasks, um, anything that's like heavily CPU bound um, should perform the same either way. Um, if it's limited by I.O., it can in some cases even be faster on um, FreeBSD, especially using ZFS with um, features like compression. Um, K4BSD has shown up in a few places around the world. Um, in Japan, in Tokyo, I noticed this picture of some, someone's laptop at that conference in Tokyo. It seems they had FreeBSD and had installed a Debian GNU K4BSD shoot on top of it. Um, also, it was apparently powering the GNU PG Git repository server. Um, in 2015, it was rejected from uh, the official release, but Right now, um, Christoph and I are trying to put together a, a release of Jesse from the state it was in when official Jesse was released. Um, it'll have the kernel of FreeBC 10.0, uh, which has many improvements that are relevant to desktop use cases mostly. Uh, we've now ported more than 90% of packages to run on this OS and fixed a lot of bugs. Um, if you were to use this on a desktop, um, it's possible with some difficulty to set up disk encryption. Uh, ZFS provides compression, checksumming of data, um, redundancy. Um, if you have multiple disks, it, it integrates support for RAID. Or if, even if you only have one disk, you can ask it to store two copies of um, files and it will automatically use the, it, it'll detect corruption on the disk. And, and still be able to retrieve an intact copy from elsewhere on the disk, unless the entire disk fails, or too much of the metadata is lost. Um, again, you can use the ZFS snapshots locally instead of on a file server, and then you can run those more often, say hourly. Um, um, we support multiple desktops except for GNOME, which it would have been too difficult at the time for us to port. Um, it was changing quite a lot due to systemd, logindd integration. And al although FreeBSD has shown it can be ported still to FreeBSD, uh, we didn't really have the resources to do that ourselves within Debian. Uh, 
um, 3D graphics should be improved because previously there weren't actually uh, kernel mode switching drivers available, but they are now. We have um, a separate Jesse KFBSD suite for this, so um, we can now make corrections to packages without going through stable proposed updates, but our own KFBSD Jesse proposed updates, and we can fix portability bugs that may not have been serious enough to request a stable PU from the release team, um, but we can fix other bugs that are more specific to KFBSD and try to make it less buggy overall. Um, it has security updates. Um, security team have hosted uh, uh, build D and our packages on the security.d.o mirrors. So an installed system would have an apt sources list, something like this. So thank you to FTP master and security teams who are actually hosting our project on their infrastructure. Um, the user land. Um, we take a snapshot of the FreeBSD kernel. That's packaged as KFreeBSD 10 <laughs> um, source package. From that, we build KFreeBSD kernel headers. We prefer that as few packages as possible actually use the, f the kernel headers because we want software to be portable and not really care which kernel is running on the machine. Um, when we upgrade the kernel, um, only packages such as the glibc, um, some cross-platform libraries such as libusb, which directly access hardware, those, are, those tend to be the only things that really need changes for a, a big kernel transition. So the libraries are abs abstracting away specifics about the kernel. Um, if you were to port your own package, um, we, we don't want to be listed as another if def in a header, you know, like Linux, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, and then Dragonfly BSD. We don't want to be another one of these because um, it's better in code to distinguish whether you need a specific kernel feature or a feature of the user land. Better still, if, if you test for um, specific features that your software needs to enable a piece of code, so that someday, if that kernel or that specific combination of kernel and user land gains support for a feature, it will be used automatically on the next package build. Um, so I'm going to skip that. So what I'd like to do with KFBSD myself is uh, support old hardware for longer, if possible. Um, Linux, for example, uh, is no longer installable from floppy drives, I think. Um, some people will have old hardware lying around, and it's not really obsolete until we stop making um, up-to-date software for it. Um, I mentioned already, you may have, say, FreeBSD proprietary applications. You might, may not want to throw those away, um, but rather, um, be able to run those still in a shoot, for example, on a more up-to-date Debian system. Um, I think uh, this project should pave the way for GNU Herd, maybe. I see the, the architecture of GNU Herd to be more like the ideal of how we'd like things to be. It's currently not as capable as K4BSD. Um, but since we're trying to abstract away kernel-specific features, um, I think New Herd will benefit from our work, and that should be eventually easier. I'm going to put these slides up online because I don't have time to get through all of them. I did promise you a demo. So um, <laughs> SDL, for example, is um, very portable. Um, the, the new support for accelerated graphics makes this possible. The, the frame rates were terrible before with the VGA graphics, but now um, accelerated 2D and even 3D graphics are now possible. Another thing, we, we do have wines, so at some point we are trying to get Steam and, and um, 
initially Windows games to actually be able to still work because it's a popular thing that people try to do on um, free operating systems. They still like to run their old applications. Yeah, so actually Steam does work and some Steam games will also work. Um, I'd encourage you to try out K4BSD. Um, we'll, there will be announcements shortly within, within DevCamp, sorry, DevConf, um, when we have a release build or release candidate put together. But that, that will be coming this week, and you'll be able to try it, hopefully. So um, I'm afraid we don't have time for your questions. Um, thank you all. Thank you. a talk schedule for half past. Hmm? You can hear it? Okay. One question I have is, uh, what's actually the most difficult thing when porting uh, like some software that compiles on FreeBSD and on Debian Linux to KFreeBSD? Um, that's actually really useful. When software supports uh, FreeBSD and GNU Linux, um, you can sometimes solve the problem in two different ways. Um, you may have a choice to use either the FreeBSD support, if it can communicate with the kernel still, or you could choose to use the GNU Linux support if there's enough of the GNU user land there for it to communicate with. Um, just a random example, um, that, that dialog at the top right of the screen is responding to ACPI events. Now, whatever shows that dialog, we, we never ported that. So that was something that worked on FreeBSD. And because it's listening, probably to DevD, just a user land piece of software that talks to the kernel receiving API events. Uh, because of that, it, it just works automatically. And there may have been yet another way of doing this by looking at um, uh, sysctl or slash proc, where we have um, compatibility, compatibility interfaces into things that a Linux program may expect there to be on that system. Um, hi, I see. Um, what's current um, suggestions or recommended uh, installation procedure? Uh, wait for the announcement. <laughs> um, there's. There have been some Jesse CD builds, but um, we didn't think they were fit for release until the last of the bugs were fixed. Um, being perfectionists and all, we we, um, we have a an upload being made today of Debian installer, and when that's finished, there'll be a mini ISO and netboot images. Um, if um, if Steve. McIntyre has time during DevConf. We'll put out a full spin of install media, and we'll announce that. <laughs> Thank you. Is the next speaker here? <laughs> 